Welcome back, Sethling here. Today I have an update to my Polaroid photo data pack. Uh, so here we have a house, there's some mountains in the background, trees all around us, and here is a photo I took. So the big update with this video is textures. So you'll notice that there's these horizontal lines going along the planks, there's these spots of mortar on the bricks, and if you look, it's pretty obvious those are in there. Uh, so not only do we have the lighting, you'll notice that uh, you know, there is the lighting between the different sides of the planks and on the trees you can see some lighting. Um, so we still have that, the shading, uh, but also now we have those textures. And also I raised the render distance to 200 instead of 50 blocks so we can see these mountains in the background. They look really nice. Uh, the trees look good. The grass, if you look at it too long, it's not that pretty, but it does demonstrate that there's textures. Now, I haven't added textures for everything. I've only added textures for a few blocks for demonstration purposes for this video. Uh, so the way this works is there's ray tracing, right? So the Polaroid photo data pack has always worked by ray tracing. So for each pixel on the map, it uh, sends out a ray in, that, in the direction of that pixel. And let's say there's a ray pointed like where my cursor is right now. So you send that ray through, boop, 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 and once it hits a block, it decides, well, okay, I hit a brick block, so I should render brick onto this map. And then it creates a block up in this giant mess of, of blocks up here that'll be interpreted by the map drawing algorithm as you know the color red. And so the big update here is that instead of just doing the color red for bricks, it actually determines these precise coordinates, the X, Y, Z coordinates, and it determines texture coordinates from that. So for instance, in this case, if I was looking at this pixel, it could see that the intersection point of that ray with the brick block uh, was at a you know Z coordinate here and a Y coordinate here. And so it can determine the coordinates within the block to look for the texture. And then it goes over here. Here I've got a stacked set of a few different blocks. Um, you can't really see them too well. Let's, let's go ahead and clone out. Uh, here's my wood texture. So I'll use Bling Edit to, let's clone this. Um, I'll just, I guess I'll, I'll clone it up on top of all of these. And, uh, and so here, this is where it does the actual lookup to find, um, so like, let's say, you know, you look up the texture coordinates right here, it would grab this block and clone it up into the structure. And yeah, so no matter what the texture coordinates are, it'll be able to find what the appropriate block for that part of the texture are and clone it up into the structure here, which gets interpreted basically by looking down from above to create that map. Um, another big update is this, the camera runs a lot faster now. So I, by doing a little bit of research on the Minecraft wiki, I found out that redstone lamps, redstone lamps block light. And so I have a potion of night vision, but, um, but it is actually completely dark under here. No light is getting through. It blocks light, but it doesn't block the map algorithm. So the map drawing algorithm can still see through all those redstone lamps and draw, you know, draw the house. So here, uh, on on the top layer here, we can see this is the this is the the stuff that makes the house. Here's the bricks. Uh, here's the wood. You can see the, some of the tree stuff up there. You, we get mountains. So uh, yeah, you can kind of make out a house right now if I go up high enough. So it's still seeing all those blocks through the top of through these redstone blo uh, redstone lamp blocks, and so that makes it a lot faster to take a picture. So let me just hop down and I'll take a picture and we'll see how fast it is. Uh, currently, it's about 20 seconds to take a picture. Let's just pick a different angle for this house, maybe something really, so here was the old angle. Let's take a new picture. So to take a picture, just reload the data packs, click take picture, and you can see that progress bar flying across the screen relative to where it was in the last video where it took me like, I think it took me like an hour to render a picture last time. Just because of all the lighting updates. This blocks the lighting updates, and so it's a lot faster, and now, um, yeah, here we go. We already got, have a new picture. So, and you can see all those textures. It is actually rendering everything. It wasn't just like a map that I imported. So I like to prove that all my things work. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the big update for this video. To cap it off, let's go ahead. Uh, let's take a picture of, <laughs> let's take a picture of the picture. Everyone requested in the last video. I didn't do it. Uh, I'll just click take picture. So the interesting thing about this is as it's sort of filling in the blocks in this region. 
it's also like taking pictures of those blocks. And so some of the blocks that it's taking pictures of will be the new blocks in the region, uh, which is kind of interesting. But it doesn't delete the old blocks, so probably most of what we'll see will look like this. But uh, huh, this one does seem to be going a little bit slower. I'm not sure why that is. I think it's because we're hitting the block, uh, the render distance for a lot more of these. And so the ray has to travel the full 200 blocks before before deciding, okay, I'm not going to render anything. I'll just render sky here. And so, um, so a lot more of the image surface is going to be covered with those sky blocks. And yeah, it just takes longer because of that, but it's still a lot better than it was in my previous video. So let me come to the middle of the area so I can render the whole map all at once and we'll see what it looks like. So after it finishes, it sometimes takes a moment to actually, um, for the server to render all the blocks onto the map and then send all that data to the client and render it onto the map. Even though the progress bar is 100% done, I still have to stall a little bit in the video. Okay, here we go. Oh, no, nope, still not. There we go. <laughs> so there is a picture of the picture. Pretty cool. Yeah, so we were, oh, huh. and there's all those sky blocks. So in fact, yes, I think all of these sky blocks were not there before when I took the picture. Um, but uh, as I took the picture, they were getting added in, and so they were added to the picture. And looks like we're far enough from the ground that it didn't end up rendering any of the like trees and stuff down below there. So um, even 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 with the 200 block render distance, it's it was still hitting that render distance uh, limit for a lot of it. But looks pretty cool. <laughs> anyway, so textures again, it's just a proof of concept. I don't have textures for every block. It's only just a few blocks. You can see over here, it's uh, oak planks, that's bricks, then that one is spruce leaves, uh, although I accidentally used the texture for oak leaves when designing that, and then there was like grass and dirt. Anyway, those are the ones, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, so if you want to download this and try it out for yourself, uh, th this world is available for download, and you can you can check it all out. That's about it, thanks for watching.